This morning, I want to talk to you about a topic that I am very interested in and I think is relevant to you, particularly as vegetarians. The fact is that we live in a society where people are getting fatter and sicker. Uh, in an epidemic proportion, as I'll demonstrate here shortly. And there's a reason for it. It's completely understandable. It'll make sense to you. And there's things that you can do that make a difference. And as good as being a vegetarian is from a health standpoint, it does not give you per, uh, inoculation from the effects of this hidden force. The brain directs the behavior of the body. It, get, it directs the brain, body through a chemical process, and although it's a complex chemical process, fundamentally, behaviors are driven to favor survival and reproduction. And the, the dominant chemical that drives behavior is this one, called dopamine. That's kind of what it looks like. And dopamine is, the, is essentially the pleasure chemical. Dopamine is what's responsible behind sex feeling good and food tasting good. The more dopamine is secreted by the brain, the better something feels or the better something tastes. And those behaviors that were critical for survival for our species were eating and sex. Get enough to eat, live long enough to reproduce. Pass the genes on. And it's, so it's not coincidental that dopamine-related behaviors fundamentally regard and drive around food and sex. And this system of secreting dopamine every time we ate or every time we had sex reinforced those behaviors. Can you imagine a species that didn't like having sex? You think they'd go through all that huffing and puffing and everything just to, if there wasn't some reward? And feeding. I mean, you know, it's a problem gathering enough food and climbing up the tree and doing whatever it is you do to survive. You do it because you're driven to do it based on pleasure response driven by dopamine. It's actually, and it's a perfect system. It's allowed our species to survive. But we got very clever. And we figured out that there are ways of artificially stimulating this pleasure response, this chemical in our brain called dopamine. And we really got into it because that's how we're designed. One way to artificially stimulate dopamine is through the consumption of drugs, like alcohol. People like alcohol because the way that makes them feel it. it, makes them feel good because it stimulates dopamine in the brain. People take all kinds of drugs to artificially stimulate dopamine in their brain. They shoot things into their veins. Who knows what this is? Yeah. Crack cocaine. They, sm they smoke crack cocaine. And cocaine is a fascinating drug because it's really efficient at stimulating dopamine in your brain. If you look at what cocaine does in the brain of human beings and you compare it to, say, having an orgasm during sex, you get ten times the dopamine secretion from smoking cocaine than having an orgasm during sex. Do you think it's any surprise that this is potentially reinforcing addictive drug? No. People like the way it makes them feel. It's called the pleasure trap. Drugs are a classic example of the pleasure trap. The pleasure trap involves the artificial stimulation of dopamine in the brain that leads to an addictive response. Now, we kind of all know that drugs can lead to addiction. Nobody, I don't think, in this room would deny that drugs can be a problem or that alcohol can be a problem or nicotine or caffeine. Although it's interesting, we give a highly addictive nervous system drug in the form of caffeine to our children the chocolate and the cocoa and the soda pop, and then we wonder, after teaching them carefully to be drug addicts all their lives, that the way you deal with problems is to take drugs. If you have a headache, you take a pill. If you have a cough, you take a pill. If you're stressed out, you take a drug when you come home. And then when they're 16 years old, we send them off to a party and say, now remember, just say no. <laughs> and we're shocked when they engage in the behavior that we've been consistently training them to engage in all their lives. This also happens to be the title of the book, that Dr. Lyle and I wrote. And we say that, that the pleasure trap is the hidden force that undermines health and happiness, and it's true. The pleasure trap is the reason why people are fat and people are sick. During the past 20 years, there's been a dramatic increase in obesity in the United States. Today, two-thirds of adults are overweight or obese. Two-thirds. That means if you're not fat, you're abnormal. What's shocking to me is the impact, if you look at children, 
While 4% were overweight in 1982, 16% were overweight by 1994, and by 2001, a quarter of all Caucasian and a third of African American and Hispanic children were overweight, and these numbers have continued to increase. Whereas 4% of childhood diabetes was type 2 in 1990, you can see it's risen to over 20% today, and of type 2 diabetics that are diagnosed, 85% of these children are obese. Which child is the vegetarian? <laughs> what do you think? Today, 93% of all the calories consumed in this country come from animal food or processed foods. That is meat, fish, fowl, eggs, dairy products, flour, sugar products. That's it. 93% of all the calories. Oil, flour, sugar, meat, fish, fowl, eggs, and dairy products. So we we recognize that today, fruits and vegetables, whole grains, beans, runnuts, and seeds make up less than 7% of all of the calories consumed in this country. Did you know of that 7%, a third of that is potatoes, but it's potatoes found in french fries and potato chips? People are not eating, and listen, I'm not eating any of this stuff, which means somebody else has been eating my share to boot. <laughs> People are not eating any fruits and vegetables as a statistically significant component of the diet. Fruits and vegetables are the decoration on the plate, as you would predict if you understand the pleasure trap. It's exactly what happens in every animal given exposure to the drug-like effect, whether it's drugs or highly processed foods. And humans are no different, except that at least in principle, Human beings are gifted with this volitional consciousness that could, at least in theory, allow you to override this instinctive drive to engage in dopamine-seeking behavior and make a rational decision to do the right thing. But it is amongst the most difficult thing human beings will ever do. Now, the way that it works, and the way that it's best described working as, as it relates to food, the dietary pleasure trap, relates to food's caloric density, that is the calories per pound. The higher the caloric density, remember back to our world of ancient ancestors, what was critical was being able to differentiate valuable foods and less valuable foods because your job was to get enough to eat and not get eaten. And it was really tough and the only animals that did that were able to be very efficient at deciding what to spend their energy eating. So if they could figure out what were the highest caloric density foods and eat those, they would survive selectively compared to animals that didn't. Your brain is an exquisite energy conserving calorie detection device. That's essentially what a big hunk of it is, is being able to detect caloric density of foods so that you can determine which foods are most valuable to you to survive. Now, some foods, like salad, has 100 calories a pound. It's got a calories, but not much. So your brain knows it's food, but it's not real excited about it. So when you see salad, you, you know, okay, I could eat that. <laughs> and if there's absolutely nothing else to eat, you might even agree, fine, I'll eat a salad while I'm waiting. Now, fruit, on the other hand, has 300 calories a pound. It has three times the cork density of raw vegetables. What tastes better to most people, fruit or salad? Fruit. Now, why does fruit taste better than salad? Because it uh, results in the stimulation of more dopamine. Because your brain is recognizing it as more valuable, and so it's rewarding you for being good and getting the more dense food. And if you look at fruit, your experience of that is different than looking at salad, isn't it? If you look at fruit, you go, yeah, I could eat that. And, you know, if you're used to eating fruit and you see something like this, you might think that'd be kind of cool, get trapped in one of those and have to eat your way out. <laughs> you know, that's, it's food. But if you're really hungry, are you going to pick fruit or are you going to pick things like potatoes, rice, or beans with their 500 calorie per pound density? Do you think if you're hungry, your brain knows the difference between if you're eating potatoes or if you're eating lettuce? Oh yeah, because you're going to survive better getting potatoes, rice, and beans in your diet because of the increased caloric density. But let's say you're not talking about just immediate survival now. What if we just want to have the pleasure of eating? How about something like, oh, I don't know, ice cream? 
If I blindfold a thousand people from around the world and we shove a, a spoonful of chocolate chocolate haagen dazs ice cream in their mouth versus a mouthful of salad, do you think they could tell the difference? <laughs> do you think 999 out of a thousand would prefer the impact of the chocolate ice cream compared to the salad? Huh? Why? 1,200 calories a pound, 12 times the density, a lot more stimulation of dopamine, which means a lot more pleasure response. Of course it's going to taste better. But did you know that bread has a higher caloric density, calories per pound, than ice cream? Have you ever seen this stuff? Hot on the outs, crunchy, soft on the inside. Have you ever been in a restaurant and they put out a basket of the stuff, you know? Now, do you ever go into that same restaurant and say, excuse me, waiter, waiter, I'd like three large baked potatoes before I order my dinner, please? Do you do that? Do you eat three large baked potatoes before you order your dinner? Why don't you order and eat three large baked potatoes before you order your dinner? Oh, you'd be too full, would you? How many calories are there in three hunks of French bread? How about exactly the same amount as three large baked potatoes? Okay, what about sugar? Are you aware that they can now refine sugar down into like these little cubes? Have you seen those? That's like 100% pure sucrose. Have you ever been in the restaurant? I think it's really cool. They give you this bucket of sugar free. No cost. You can just have as much as you want. Now, do you ever go in there and say, take 11 teaspoons of sugar and just woof it down? Do you do that? It's free. You don't do that? Why not? Have you ever had one of these? Anybody? Ever had one of those? How many teaspoons of sugar in one of those? 11 teaspoons of sugar. Now, it used to be 11. Now, the new Coke, they figured out a way to get a little bit more sugar in, one more teaspoon, because it used to come out of solution, and it looked kind of crappy, you know? But they figured out a way to manipulate the phosphoric acid or whatever. Now they can get 12 teaspoons of sugar. And we wonder why our children are getting fatter. Well, 25% of the calories in some studies that teenagers consume in this country come from the sugar and soda pop alone. What about this? Do people like chocolate? <laughs> chocolate has 2,500 calories a pound. Now, what? Now, potatoes taste good. Potatoes have 500 calories a pound. They taste good. But hey, potato chips, they taste great. And when they say, bet you can't just eat one, they're not kidding. Because potato chips have 2,500 calories a pound compared to potatoes at 500 calories a pound. Now, notice how we use subliminal influence to do this education. Potatoes, good, green. Potato chips, red, bad. I think we should stop kidding ourselves. But just stick your head in the deep fryer and suck. <laughs> Healthy foods, interestingly enough, in green, have one to 500 calories a pound. Artificial foods, foods responsible for the dietary pleasure trap, foods we invented that don't exist in a natural setting, 12 to 4,000 calories a pound. What's 4,000 calories a pound? Pure oil. That's why we like anything fried. Deep fried ice cream. 93% of calories. This is a phenomenon. Foods that don't even exist in a natural setting or don't, don't play a dominant role in the diet become 93% of all the calories consumed. Walk into any Costco or Safeway and just watch what people buy. There's a, there's a probably 0.8 correlation coefficient between what you see in the cart and how big they are. We have to eat. We need a source of calories. We need a source of fuel. We also need to get water. We need to get protein for its essential amino acids, fat for its essential fatty acids. We need vitamins. We need minerals. We need fiber. And we need phytochemicals. So whatever diet we put together, it better have all those things and in appropriate quantities. Now, the problem is the way that we put the diet together now, where 93% of the food comes from these foods, animal foods, meat, fish, phallics, and dairy products, Meat, fish, phallic, it's really one word when you think about it. <laughs> Animal foods, meat, fish, phallic, dairy products, and highly processed foods, oil, flour, sugar, and dairy again. Now, dairy is a very special food. It is the un only food that gets to be in both categories. It's both an animal food and a highly processed food. Now, from a physiological standpoint, 
dairy products are probably the single most health compromising foods that people consume. The, the truth is from a health standpoint you'd probably be better off eating the flesh. Dairy products are amongst the most destructive foods that we feed and it's particularly true with children. They're the leading cause of anemia in children. They cause insulin dependent diabetes in children. Um, dairy products are responsible for much of the otitis media, much of the acne and many of the other problems that you see that dominate. They're a primary source of saturated fat both in vegetarians and meat eaters and they should be excluded from the diet. But we live in a country where the dairy industry is so powerful that they get federal laws passed mandating that every child in the country, including the 90% of blacks and 80% of Asians that can't even digest milk because of inability to contain the necessary enzymes to break down lactose, must be given milk. You can't substitute it with some superior alternative like soy milk or something because it's important that every single child be given this noxious substance. And if your school district refuses to do that, of course, they're going to lose their federal funding because we vote people into power that although they're supposed to be representing our interests, oftentimes represents the interests of the people that have economic power. I know many of you are going to find that shocking, <laughs> but I believe it to be true. There are problems with animal products, and I don't think that can be denied. Bacteria. I mean, you know, if they don't cook that hamburger quite enough, your kid might die. Viruses, including bovine leukemia viruses, prion, so that's exciting. An organism you can't even, a, 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 a prion you can't even kill with cooking that can fester in an individual for 10 years or longer and when it manifests can melt your brain down so you get like Alzheimer's and fast forward. Really something wonderful to look forward to but of course they promised us don't worry you can't cross the human blood barrier you have nothing to worry about until a bunch of young people died in England and a guy named Howard Lyman turned out to be telling the truth. Heavy metal contamination, growth stimulants and hormones because it's not enough to just raise the animal and kill it. We've got to make it get bigger, fatter, faster. Um, antibiotics, most of which, interestingly enough, are fed to animals. And this fundamental problem of biological concentration. Obviously, when animals get exposed to all these chemicals and they eat food that are contaminated, they biologically accumulate poisons in their tissues. You kill it, you eat it, and it builds up in you. You moving to the top of the food chain, if you're not a vegetarian, suffer the consequences of the biological concentration of all these problems with animal foods. So what should we eat? Since we just eliminated 93 plus percent of all the calories that are consumed in this country, what's left? Well, fruits and vegetables, raw nuts and seeds, and complex carbohydrates like potatoes, yams, squash, millet, rice, beans, etc. And if you make a diet that is exclusively derived from these foods, you get all the vitamins, minerals, fiber, protein, essential fatty acids, water, and minerals that you need.